Hi friends, it's Erin Byron, the Enlightenment Activist, coming to you from an airplane. We are Quito to Galapagos, and this here is my new friend, a native of Michigan, Debbie Nolan. Debbie Nolan. And Debbie was telling me that she went and participated in the Women's March recently in Washington. So I have three questions for Debbie, and my first question is, can you just tell me something about your lifestyle, something you do to keep yourself happy or healthy? I can, you know, um, I'm a Quaker. Uh, I'm a member of the Religious Society of Friends. And what I've turned to is uh, meditation. And particularly because of the political environment that we're in in the United States right now, I'm booking retreats. I'm trying to go inward, and be an activist outward at the same time. Yes. Beautiful. I didn't know you would see spontaneity. I yeah. Know. One of my closest mentors went to seminary for a Quaker. Really? And, oh, I just, I did a, a retreat at Pendle Hill. I, I led a retreat at Pendle Hill a number of years nice. ago. Nice. I was at Pendle Hill for three months so as a student. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, so wonderful. It's a retreat center in uh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Wallingford, Pennsylvania. And it's 25 acres of beauty and a great place to be. It's a great place to be. Yeah. That's lovely. Question two. Question two is, what compelled you to go on the Women's March? I mean, with so many things happening in the political climate, what made you think it might be important to participate? Well, another thing that I am and do is I'm an elected official, so I've been 13 years as a politician and I really felt a deep need to do something and the Women's March seemed like a perfect fit and uh, several of my friends went so we had this great group of women there were 56 of us on one bus and it, it's just the, the compulsion to do something positive in this new environment we find ourselves yes yeah, it matters. It matters, and we have to stay positive. Yes, we have to stay positive and believe that every single one of our voices makes a difference. It does. I know that to be true. Ah, question number three. Question number three is, so further to that point, really, tell me about a moment that stood out for you on the march. Oh, you know, what I did, um, they told us we couldn't march. What? And... There were too many of us because they thought there were going to be 200,000 of us and there turned out to be at least uh, over half a million. There's too sure. many of you stay on the bus? Is that kind no, of No, not you're... stay on the bus, but we were like relegated to this area where the speakers were and things. And oh. So what happened was spontaneously people started walking mm -hmm. and I was watching it. Um, the parade go by so I jumped up on uh, those stands that they had set up on the side for the presidential inauguration and I went to the top stand and I just stood there and started crying it was beautiful <laughs> it was so great to see all these people together it was so great to read the signs it was it was just I I'm crying again. Here you go. It was it was fabulous. It was a great moment. And then I got back down into the mix and started marching again myself. Did you have that transcendent moment to just look down upon yes. it all and see? And observe, take it in from above and then go back into the mix. Yeah. It's profound. Even that's a profound point. I think about how you were there and then you let yourself be there. It's okay. 